thanks for joining us for this episode. And I wanted to remind you that you actually can watch video versions of each episode by subscribing to the Church Advance YouTube channel. All you got to do is head over to youtube.com slash at Church Advance or see the link in the show notes and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel there. Of course, you can follow us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you may be listening to podcasts. But wanted to give a special plug for the video version. Well, I'm really excited about getting to today's episode as we continue to advance a reformation, a fellowship, partnership, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches. This is Church Advance with Brian Sams. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Church Advance podcast with Brian Sams. Of course, that's me. I'm Brian Sams, and I'm with Luke again here in the studio. Luke, how's it going uh, up in Tennessee, man? Hey, it's going good. Uh, it's been a it's been a good, productive. Uh, I guess three, four weeks since we last talked. It's been yeah. good, but it's always good to be back in our virtual studio here, uh, recording new content. And um, you know, I'm looking I'm looking forward to today's conversation. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go right off the bat. New month, and and we as we have said, we're gonna spend the first episode of each month talking about preaching, and predominantly talking about tips to transform your preaching or strategies to sharpen your preaching. And so today I want to give you one of those, one of those strategies to sharpen your sermons. And I want to talk about how that pastoring will sharpen your sermons. Okay. Now I spend a lot of time, Luke, um, teaching college students as I did with you and I still do Mm -hmm. it. Uh, I have, I think right now I got about 35 homiletic students in two different schools. And of course the overwhelming majority of those guys are college age, 18 to 22. Most of them are single. Most of them have never pastored. There's the occasional married guy that's there who maybe has a little bit of experience, but these are, these are guys who virtually have no experience. And I always, I always tell them that this is a class and this class is like one dot, one stop on the lifelong journey of learning how to preach. And Mm. now that I've been doing it for 21 years, I can, I can start marking off those dots, those, those stops on the journey and it's fluid, it never stops. So it's not like you ever stop anywhere, but I'm just trying to give you the visual of there are certain things that happen along the journey that improve your preaching and, and preaching best improves by experience. No question about it. So if you're young and you're listening and you're frustrated with speaking or preaching, you need to give it time and space to allow God to form in you what and through you, what preaching is ultimately going to look like. Mm-hmm. I read I read an article this week, uh, and it was uh, one I haven't shared with you yet. So we'll have to you have to remind me to get this in a link. But it's it was, a, it was an article on why why I left the pastorate, and it was a guy who had pastored a large Presbyterian church for ten years and, and walked out on 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 the church and made a decision to not no longer be in pastoral ministry, mm-hmm. and. Um, and, and he given his reasons why. And the last thing that he said was that pastoring brings with it, quote unquote, unrealistic expectations. And I read down through them and some of the some of the expectations were maybe unreasonable or unrealistic. But the first one was reasonable and realistic. And he said the first the first thing that's expected of you that's that's hard as a pastor is that you are a professional public speaker. Well, you know, news flash to everybody. Um, that actually is what you're doing. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know that I would consider myself professional, but I guess in some senses I am, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I what people most predominantly know about me, either in my church or other churches, is my speaking. Uh, that's just the reality. And pastoring forces you to become better at preaching. It forces you to become better with people. 
and and I'm I'm talking about how today pastoring is actually what helps improve your preaching. Okay, uh, recently I was reading and just a devotional read. I ended up I was in some prophets and in, in in the Pentateuch reading Numbers chapter twenty two and Jeremiah twenty three, and in both cases we find God displeased with prophets and shepherds. Balaam, of course, in Numbers was motivated by financial gain and was willing to accommodate his message uh, in order to appease his audience for, for money. Jeremiah, on the other hand, brings a strong warning to shepherds who did not care for, but rather scattered sheep. So he condemn then he then he also condemns them for you know not living in a way that honors the God that they are preaching about. Mm. So so here's the bottom line: I want to minister and preach in a way that shepherds people. And and what I'm saying is, pastoring helps your preaching because pastoring syncs you with the shepherding teaching model that God would want you to have. So in other words, in other words, pastoring people actually shapes your preaching. And, and, and so I don't, I don't want to obviously hurt, scatter, harm, intimidate, guilt trip, the flock of God. I want to, I want to help heal, nourish, feed, and encourage the flock. That's my goal. And now that I've been pastoring for eight years, I feel like pastoring has actually shaped my preaching and made my preaching better, deeper, and stronger. Yeah. And, um, you know, you, I, I can't help but think about um, maybe on the other end of the uh, spectrum of what you're talking about with some, uh, I, I don't know, I just heard a story and, you know, you hear stories that go around. Uh, I don't know if they're true, if they're not, but I heard, I heard something a while back about a pastor who, um, you know, basically said when he was approached about being the pastor, he basically said, all I will do is, is preach. That's it. You can't expect me to actually pastor. I'm not going to do that. And, you know, it's, it just seems like such a, uh, particularly in that situation, kind of an, an arrogant thing to do because, uh, you know, and it almost almost sounds like, you know, you hear about these people that are almost just, they're so elite, they are, they're out of touch with their people. And so I can imagine that actually pastoring your people uh, only helps you to maintain that relevance in uh, your preaching and your speaking. And so, um, Brian, you've got you've got three points here today that we're going to move through in this episode. Um, and the first one here is that uh, pastoring uh, has helped you to see the real kind of in line with what I was just saying there. Pastoring has helped you to see the real struggles of people. Yeah, I mean, when you when you're in the same place for any length of time, I mean, you're obviously going to rub shoulders with people. I want to make one more comment about what you said real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that I do think it is possible that certain pastoral expectations have been put on people that are not necessarily biblical. And so you see reactions like that. I mean, I would tell you, I predominantly teach, preach, train, lead, et cetera. But I mean, if you're a pastor, there are two in, you know, indestructible skills that have, I mean, if you don't have them, you're done. Yeah. Uh, you gotta be able to preach and you gotta love people. I mean, if you mm. don't, if you can't preach and you don't love people, I'm telling you right now, you are in the wrong business. Mm. I think I think there are administrative things. I think there are other roles that have traditionally been given to pastors that may or may not be pastoral, so to speak. But those two things are absolutely clear. And so as it relates to this, if you love people, you are in their struggle. I mean, I'm just thinking I'm thinking I'm thinking of uh, people I've walked through with addictions men that are destroying their families with alcoholism, hmm. sitting in the hospital with a man and his daughter after her face literally was bitten off by a dog. And, and when he, he watched the whole thing happen and her face flayed open right in front of him. And I was there wow. after I was there after the first surgery. Well, I'm telling you, man, I walk in the room and the guy just melts in my arms. I mean, there, there's, there's things like this people 
I'm, I'm thinking of, of, of the woman in our church, faithful lady in our church, her only son, her only son died suddenly of a heart attack and, and just experiencing that, watching that. I walk into a hospital room where a woman is, her, her daughter is on a ventilator and, and, and being there in this highly emotional moment, uh, seeing divorce happen, seeing, look, if you are pastoring people, you're going to get up close and personal with their struggles. I'm not talking about, mm -hmm. God, listen, I'm not talking about Luke preaching to the struggles of people. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about my next week's sermon has to be, what do you do when you get divorced? Because I was dealing with somebody that was divorced. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the real struggles of people, what people are really going through shapes application and it shapes the way that you preach to people. Let me say it like this. People are beat up throughout the week. And when they come to church, it should not be their seventh day of beatings, <laughs> yeah. you know, in, in a week where they've been beat up at work and stressed out with family and struggle with finances. They ought to come into church and church ought to be like hooking up to the oxygen machine, life-giving, encouraging. Uh, and I used to, man, I, before I was a pastor, sad to say, admittedly, I was not always the most encouraging preacher. I mean, I would say I was more um, in your face, you know, trying to change, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I remember at college one time, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Chapel used to joke with me and say, you know, you preach like you preach like one encouraging message out of a hundred. And, and, and so I remember standing up and preaching chapel one day and I said, well, guys, Pastor Chapel said one time I preached uh, one mess, one encouraging message out of a hundred. And last Wednesday night, I preached an encouraging message. So I've just run out. <laughs> <laughs> and then like preached on Jonah or something, you know, at, at, yeah. at college chapel. You know, I, I mean, I'm sure there was a place for that in some areas, but I am thankful now that pastoring people has shaped the way I think about people, how I want to treat people, mm. and how I want to use the pulpit to shepherd people on Sunday. Mm. Yeah, and I do think about that whole, because before you were a pastor, you were an evangelist, and they, evangelists do kind of get that rap of their, their kind of draw. I think somebody put it, their, their job is to just kind of, they just come in, and they just kind of swoop and poop, and then they're <laughs> out of there, you know, just like a seagull. Uh, and that, that's their deal. Um, and so, uh, you know, I yeah, used to I, hear, I used to hear it was blow in, blow out, uh, blow, <laughs> blow in, blow up, blow out. That was the yeah. old, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, um, and, 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 but I mean, it makes sense. I mean, because you're not, you know, there in that church. And it's not to say there's anything wrong with that uh, evangelistic role there. You know, there, there can be some benefit there. Obviously, like Brian, you still preach out and you still, you know, go to churches and speak in, in somewhat in that capacity. But, um, but yeah, being with the people day in and day out, uh, as you're talking about, makes a big difference. So, well, you know, I mean, you know, back to the point, one more, one more thing I'll say about this first point, it has changed the way I preach revival meetings. Mm. I yep. mean, I, I don't think the same way I used to think because I know walking into that church, that church is filled with people just like in my church. Hmm. I, st I started a revival meeting this coming Monday night and in, in, out in the country here in Florida, and I'm going to preach to those people like I'm their pastor. Now, right. they're, having, they're having me because they know maybe I have a certain uh, pulpit presence that they like. It fits in a revival context, mm -hmm. but, but I'm not blowing in, blowing up, and blowing out. I mean, that's not yeah. going to happen uh, because I understand now better – the struggles of people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that pastoring has helped you understand the struggles there. Well, the second uh, point that you have here is that pastoring has helped you uh, to see a long-term and healthy view of discipleship. Yeah. So what I mean here is I used to think, man, I used to think of discipleship. We talked about this in the small group discussion, but I used to think of um, uh, discipleship as linear uh, hmm. steps to accomplish, it's so stupid. When I start talking it out, it makes me mad. That I used to think yeah. this way. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you you do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this. A discipleship is all about do. Mm -hmm. And what I found was discipleship is more organic than that. And it's more mm -hmm. about it's more about 
need to know, need to grow. And, 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 and discipleship is just not that cut and dry. Yeah. I mean, just, just for instance, not everybody's on the same track. I mean, we, we wrestle with this as we talk about curriculums and stuff in our church. It's like everybody walks in that door is not at the same place. So their needs are different. Hmm. And so, so as I look at, as I look at discipleship, it used to be my sermon was for the next decision you need to make. Yeah. And that was especially true of an evangelist. Like come in tonight, I'm preaching on this and you've got to decide right now to start tithing right now. Mm -hmm. And or you've got to decide to forgive your mom, you know, or you've got to yeah. decide to go be a missionary right now. And, and I keep thinking to myself, that's really not the way it normally works. Normally mm. what's happening is people are growing and HB Charles says it like this. I don't remember every meal I ever ate, but I'm here today because I eat every day. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't remember all the sermons I've heard, but spiritually I'm where I am today because God's word has been invested into my life. So I look at my people. Okay. I look at my people. I'm preaching through Revelation right now after years of preaching through the life of Christ. And then I'm going to go to Galatians next, next spring. It's a lifetime, man. It's a, it's a journey. It's discipleship. It does not take place by making a decision every Sunday. Mm. Now, I, I mean, I still give, I still give altar calls. I, I give a salvation invitation every time I preach at my church, every single time. And I, I, I refuse to not do it. So I'm, I, I know, but every Sunday I'm not saying everybody come down to the altar. We've got a decision to make. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's just not that simple. Um, sometimes it is a moment where let's stop and pray about this mm -hmm. or, we got some hurting people in our church. Let's wrap around our arms around them, encourage them. Or, or maybe there is a, a moment where somebody needs to be challenged about something in particular. I, I'm not saying that never happens. I'm just saying every time I preach, I'm not looking for somebody to make an actual cataclysmic decision every time. Yeah. It's more step by step, moment by moment, line upon line, precept upon precept. You know, yeah. So yeah. that's what I'm thinking there. Yeah, and that, that's we we kind of touched on this a little bit um, in one of our conversations about the connection groups and everything. Is that discipleship isn't isn't as cut and dry as maybe we want it to be. Um, you know, there there's nothing wrong with maybe a systematic approach or or, or even a curriculum necessarily, but uh, you know, you just got to think about uh, even think about if, if you are reaching people and you're having new people come to your church, well, at any given point, you know, you could be, uh, if, if you're trying to take this more systematic approach, they could come in and in the middle. Well, what do you do now? You know? Uh, and so people are, it doesn't matter how long they've been at the church, if they're new, if they've been there a while, everybody's at a different spot on that discipleship journey, if you will. And, you know, that uh, just the fact that, you know, having that changing that perspective, I think can make a big difference um, just in how you're uh, or, or doing your church in general. Yeah. I mean, think about it like, okay, so at my church and, and this is pretty much true of every church. Um, you're, we're, we're no longer in a world where everybody, that, okay. So every guest that walks through your church, they could be moving from another city. And, and I mean, as, I've, I've got guys that have walked through my church for the first time and they were former pastors. Okay. I've got guys that have walked through the door the first time that have never been to church in their life. Mm. There's no curriculum that matches both of them, man. Absolutely you've, not. You've got to be able to preach and teach and, 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 and help people take, you know, move forward in their life from wherever they are. And mm. that's why I think, um, a more long-term approach to preaching and decision-making and discipleship only comes through pastoring. Because if you're, if all you do is preach conferences or preach revival meetings, you're there for one week and you're like, we got to get it all done right here. I used to be like that. Good night. Every hmm. night, every night of a revival meeting would be like, there's a, there's a life changing decision that's got to be made. Uh, and, and I think I've, that's, God's changed that about me in my regular preaching now. Yeah. And, and so this pastoring uh, helps you see that long-term, and I like that word, long-term. 
uh, and healthy view of discipleship. Like I said, there's no cut and dry process. There's no 12 week, uh, you know, journey to now you're a perfect disciple or, or anything like that. It's, it's that long term. And, and I got to say too, like just the Christian walk, if you will, in discipleship, like it is, it is a journey. Like, I don't think we have to make too much of this. I think most people in our audience understand, but like, you never arrive, you're never right. there, you know, uh, and, and is having that mindset there. So that brings us to the final thought for this episode, which is pastoring has helped you uh, to uh, patiently work through scripture, knowing that a balanced biblical diet is the most helpful thing. Yeah. So like, if you're preaching expositionally to, to the sec, to the point we just made, not every section of scripture is a firework display mm. that that calls for this thing, whatever that thing is. I mean, yeah. this steady diet of expositional preaching is going to bring about a, a variety of types of sermons, of topics of sermons, tone of sermons, like 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 uh, Second Timothy four two. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with long suffering doctrine. There's going to be times when you're in the pastoral epistles and the sermon is on elder qualifications. Well, I mean, okay, that's that's going to be a different sermon than put on the armor of God, Ephesians chapter six. Mm -hmm. and, and what? And I believe as you do expository preaching work, what happens is over the long haul in a church is you realize that, <laughs> let's say it like this, I, I tell our churches all the time, they crack up when I say this, um, you know, oatmeal is not why a fat boy gets out of bed, but it, but it works. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I say that to my church whenever I'm about to preach a sermon that, okay, this one's, this one's didactic. This one is theological or this, I mean, they're, they're, it's just not the home run. Mm -hmm. Like, like, um, like this coming Sunday, I'm preaching. A, a, I'm, I'm talking about like a, it's, it's a home run type sermon, but mm -hmm. uh, not every sermon I preached out of the minor prophets was that way. Yeah. You know, it just, yeah. it, they're, they're all different. And so, but, but here's the thing, they just need to be fed and they don't need pizza every Sunday. Yeah. And they and they don't need McDonald's every Sunday. Every once in a while, they need a salad uh, or oatmeal. You know, they mm -hmm. just it, it doesn't have to be like that every week. And I'm not saying, by the way, what I'm not saying is the sermon shouldn't be good. Hmm. Every sermon should be good. Yeah. I'm saying every sermon is is more of a steady diet than a fancy, exquisite meal. Yeah. Yeah. And what's interesting is that's kind of how. Scripture's designed, you know, yeah. um, you, like you were talking about the different epistles, you know, I, I, and, and this, the Pauline epistles are all coming from the same author, but there's different, you know, kind of uh, topics and subject matter that's approached in different epistles. And even like the book of Romans, like the front half is super theological. The back half is a little more practical. And that that's, again, that, this is how uh, God has designed his word, if you will. And so, you know, by, by going through, uh, by going through that in that way, um, as, as, as you're preaching through it, well, again, it's, it's preaching the whole counsel of God there. Yeah. So I think, I think my final word to the audience would be let, let, let this, these rhythms and pastoring shape your preaching. Don't fight it. Don't, don't, don't try to, don't try to work around it. You, you think of the old W.A. Criswell story I've shared with this, every homiletics class I've ever had to share this story, but he, he wrote his autobiography, Standing on the Promises, which is fantastic. Mm. Um, and he tells the story how he became an expository preacher. And he said, you know, when I first started preaching, I was in school, I was in grad school. I'd pastor here for two or three years, here for two or three years. He said it was all topical. I'd preach through stewardship. I'd preach through, get, you know, soul winning missions. I, and then and then two or three years I do it. And then I'm done. And then I move on to another church. He said, then I went to First Baptist Church in Muskogee, Oklahoma. He said, and the first day I got there, the, the former pastor's wife was still there. He had passed away. And uh, she showed him the old preacher's study hmm. and, and his Bible was still on the desk. And he said, I spent the rest of the afternoon sitting at that desk, flipping through this old man's Bible. And he said, I started noticing beside passages of scripture, there'd be 
a date, January 2nd, 1932 or whatever. January 9th, 1932 is how I started noticing all these are every, this is every, this is every seven days. Hmm. And this old preacher was marking off where he was preaching through hmm. the Bible, through the Bible. And he said, that was it. It changed my life. He said, I realized I was missing the grand story of scripture. I was missing the stories of scripture. I was missing the story line of scripture. I was missing. My people were not learning the Bible. And he said, that's it. That, 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 that changed it. And that's the way you got to view preaching. Preaching is a long view of mm. teaching people the whole counsel of God. Mm. Yeah. And it is interesting how all these points kind of tie in together because you're talking about working through scripture, uh, but also that feeds into that long-term discipleship process that you're talking about uh, in the second point. And then it even feeds into the first point there of how pastoring helps you see, understand, and help people uh, th through their struggles, you know, right. because that is the incredible thing about scripture again, is that uh, somehow uh, when you're struggling, it's, it's always, uh, it always seems to find a relevance in some way. And that's just the power of the word of God there. Uh, well, Brian, is there any other, you know, kind of closing thoughts here as we wrap up, uh, this episode? No, I think, I think the key is what we're going to learn on these preaching pointers episodes is that it's going to come from a variety of sources. Uh, don't be looking for the next book. It's not always mm. about a book. It's not always about a class. It's about, opening up your heart to every possible avenue to help your preaching improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think with that thought, that's a great place for us to, uh, you know, kind of uh, stop this episode. Of course, like you said, uh, we'll be back next month with all new content focused on preaching. Uh, and so we are so glad you joined us today for this episode of Church Advance with Brian Sams. God bless you guys. Hey, thanks so much for joining us for this episode. And until next time, I want to remind you that you can subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can actually watch video versions of each episode. The video version is also available on Spotify, so make sure to follow us there. You can also catch the audio on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and wherever you may listen to podcasts. If you want to connect with Brian, then simply head over to his website, briansams.com, where you can reach out, ask a question, and get connected there. The podcast is hosted by Brian Sams. It's co-hosted and produced by myself, Luke Clayton, and the team at mustincrease.com. Thanks so much again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode as we continue to advance a reformation, a fellowship, partnership, and gospel hope amongst Bible-believing pastors and churches right here on Church Advance with Brian Sanders.